Ja nie mam te czyci apeli. I tak lepiej. On te to pile włoska apeli ma, jak ja mam lakota, kiedy trochę he, taku kampanisz, taku ogle na mosoki, czujk na ha. Tak pijem ha, he na włoska apeli ma i czapa apeli. Na Hokna la kota ke oyan pe yukha ampetu ma el washitu ki ahina ma shitho ya ahiti cha wana he chum he ha bi woska pi ble dweni he ha chushu ash e taku so wai mish taku maste ki he na ampetu ki le yukha Chante waste a nate chius a pi na ma hena hung o speci chia borchi chia wopi la chicha. La kotia wa onshi la wi ma chia pi. Na wa shi chia grow up spider ma chia pi. I was just saying a good day to all of you, good morning. and. I was explaining in Lakota how at one time everything was decorated with quilts. And we decorated our leggings, shirts, dresses, shoes, everything was made with quilt work. And that's how we did everything. And today, uh, since the becoming of the white man and traders, we have beads today. And so when we have beads, then we forget about our quills, our quill work. And it's uh, hardly anybody does it. Few families still do the quill work. And from what I've learned from my grandmothers and my mother, I wanted to just uh, share that with you today in teaching you how to uh, wrap uh, on rawhide. I've been teaching a lot of the classes in the college centers and this uh, rawhide, you have to get a certain kind to, so it bends and it's easier to work on. We have some rawhide that are so stiff you can't do hardly anything with them. But I've been, uh, I get the ones that bend easy, real easy, and then we, um, I cut them into strips, and then I'll teach you how to do your wrapping. When you get a porcupine, people think that, oh yeah, I got the biggest quills. So I want to do the, uh, the quill work with porcupine quills. And these are big, big quilts here. They're the biggest ones you can get. But you really can't do no wrapping with the quilt that big, that size. You can make chokers, earrings, and different jewelry, but you're not gonna use this to wrap. You'll see when you start wrapping. <laughs> so the best ones I find, yeah in doing the quilt work, in wrapping, are these skinny long ones. The, the thinner ones, the long ones, they're the ones that you uh, do your wrapping with. But the thick one you can use, I save all this for jewelry, because you can still uh, use this. So I save that. This one here comes from a big porcupine, maybe at least 30 pounds or something. It's a big porcupine. And I go there and I let it rot for a two or three days and then take all the quills off of that. And the sides, on the sides of the uh, porcupine, you get the fine quills. And the back part of it is where the big, and the, onto the tail, you get the real big, big uh, uh, quills. So you can, 
uh, when you get a porcupine, you can take all the quills off if you want to. And then you wash them in Clorox and Tide, and just really wash them good. Let it rinse, wash them again. I usually do it like three times. Table and, and throw, all, uh, throw all the quills on it and let it dry. As it's drying, I'm lifting them up and, and getting all the um, weeds and different things that's in there. The guard hair, the very first one is the guard hair, but I don't use them, so I just take them and I save them for whoever needs them. But I mostly work with the quills. Today we were gonna do a, we were gonna do the uh, dyeing of the quills, but all we have is a plastic. <laughs> we needed tin cans to boil. We really can't put this on the stove anymore. It's <laughs> gonna melt all over. But we need the uh, coffee cans, the metal ones. Or when you're doing your vegetables, the big cans, save the cans. And um, that's what you use to put your red dye into it. You put your red dye into your water and here's the dye and you put water into your can and your dye. I would say at least two teaspoons and half of water. And you pick your quills and you throw them in and you have to have a, like a, a metal fork and just keep stirring it. And when it starts boiling, you turn it down and let it simmer. And that's what holds the color. If you, once you uh, put your, uh, dye and your quills into a can, you have to be there to watch it at all times because when you don't, if you don't do that, if it boils over, then you have quills all over the stove. <laughs> I've done it so I know. But as you're working with quills, you're gonna uh, learn how to uh, really do uh, your dyeing and sorting. And here's how I keep my quills. I keep my quills into little containers. I try to have, uh, sort them all out. I do all the, I do the dyeing and then sorting and then uh, some of these, I cut the tips off of them already. So it's easier. When you cut the tip off, the black tip is what you cut off. You don't cut the, the tail part. I call this the tail part. But the black tip, you cut the tip off of it. And so some black still shows. But you keep it like this, and then when you're ready to work with it, you get uh, uh, cups of water or bowls, and you throw the quills in there and you let it uh, soak. You let that soak, so it softens up, and then um, after it softens up, then you're ready to put your wrap in. Here's some of the guard hair. Um, some people make kesha. They make the kesha, the head roach. And they're always looking for um, guard hair. So this is just some of it that I kept. Uh, sometimes you get real long guard hair. And anyway, I just keep them. I put them into a shoe box and I keep it till somebody says, Bro, do you have guard hair? I would uh, give that to them. <coughs> and today it's it's easy, everything's easy today because of the rip dye. A uh, long time ago, they used the berries and some of the uh, roots. There's just different 
things that they used to dye the quilts with. Today it's really easy for us. We have red dye. We can get red dye in almost any color that we want to work with. So I'm ha always happy for the red dye. And here's some quilts that are already uh, dyed. And what we do is put them into little baggies when they dry, when they're real dry. Put them into little baggies. If you don't have all this, then you put it into little baggies. And then you keep them like that till you're ready to work with them. And I have, uh, today we're only gonna do the, uh, the I'm gonna teach you how to do the wrapping on the rawhide. So it's just straight work. Just so you have an idea how to connect your quill, wrap, connect again. And at the end, I'll teach you how to um, end your work. And we don't believe in, as Lakota people, we don't believe in super glue. <laughs> super glue. <laughs> when I'm teaching quill work, I say, no super glue, okay? It's not. Uh, that's not the way to do your quill work, super glue. <laughs> so I'll teach you how to end your work. This is just one of my finished projects I did. It's a medicine wheel. But next semester, I'll be teaching here at um, Kyle. I'll be doing um, quill work. So we'll do the straight. We'll go into uh, medicine wheels. We'll do earrings. We'll do all kinds of stuff. Again, this is just my collection of what I do. This is rawhide, and I do the double medicine wheel. Every, I think all the sun dancers, they love the double. And so that's what I do. So I just mark them, and I'm cutting and working them. Uh, you need a little exacto knife just to uh, so I have all the legs, I call them the legs. And so that's what I do. Especially in the summertime, I'm real busy with uh, doing medicine wheels. If there's name giving ceremonies, I do uh, medicine wheels for them. Um, I always think of the family of the Brewer family, Allie uh, Badhart, she ordered uh, 18 medicine wheels because they had a big uh, ceremony for all their children and grandchildren. And she gave me the biggest order. I just put it on the table. I did all, I wrapped all my black ones first. I wrapped, I went around wrapping all the black and then all the red and all the yellow and all the white and I finished all 18. And it took me two whole days to do it. Uh, because it takes you like half an hour to do a medicine though, once you really start doing them. And here's another, another medicine wheel, another blade. Uh, you can buy these uh, little ones. The pre-cut, you can buy them at Singing Horse or Prairie Edge. Uh, they sell the pre-cut, they're small. But when you do your own, you can make them bigger. You can make the biggest, uh, or you can do them that way. So there's different sizes. But this one you can get uh, easy at uh, any trading post. Uh, I also do, uh, turtle. A lot of people would like to have a turtle for their little girl who's getting an Indian name. So we also, I also have the turtle. It's just all kinds of uh, rawhide that I have here. And these ones, I have an order for 12 of these. I already did my wrapping. But in here is going to be uh, yellow, orange, red, orange, and yellow. So it's going to be like a sunburst. That's how I'm going to make So I have 12 of them. 
that I'll be doing. Okay, so you can go ahead and come up and uh, get your uh, get your rawhide. I also brought the red we need when we end off our work. You need a good pair of scissors, real sharp. Just like when you're making your papa, you need the best <laughs> sharp knife. <laughs> That's how you do your uh, your quill, your rawhide. So I already cut some of these, and when you're when you have a sharp scissor, then you can cut your rawhide. I did cut some of them, but I'll cut one so you can see. You can see how the uh, you just cut it straight. And uh, we're gonna need uh, water, cups of water. Yeah, so you're gonna need some cups of water to soften your um, Maybe they have plastic cups, styrofoam cups or something. Healthy cups or styrofoam cups. We're just going to do a lot of practice. A lot of practice. Because you're not going to um, 
soak your quills, your white and the purple, because it will turn purple <laughs> and our lavender. So you need two separate cups for the to uh, soak your quills. You just after you cut the tips off of your uh, quills, then you just put them in, in the water to soak out. Hey, did, did you come to the quill work? Oh, okay. <laughs> you need to get some, uh, get some, um, oh, she got some. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, go ahead and um, we're going to start doing the wrapping. <laughs> So go ahead and pick your quills. Do you gonna need the long did you do quiller before? Oh, okay. So you know how to pick your quills, the long skinny ones? Pick your long skinny quills. Cut the tips off of these <coughs> and soak them. would have been a good one but then it's it's got a spot right here and it's weak because when you pull it then it, it breaks it breaks apart. So when you have one with the with the little spot on it you know it's gonna be weak. And when you pull on it it uh, breaks. Everybody's got a roll it. If we had all day, we will make hat bands. <laughs> but we don't have all day. <laughs> At one time, uh, when I was younger, I would put like maybe eight or ten, ten uh, quills in my mouth, because you flatten them between your teeth. <coughs> you flatten your quills. You flatten your quills and then you can put it inside of your mouth on the side. You keep them there to keep them moist. <laughs> and then as you're wrapping, as you're wrapping your quilt, you're pulling them out of your <laughs> Maybe you have one color on this side and one color on the other. <laughs> so you just pull it out and you start wrapping your your quill. But today we have uh, washcloths. I've seen people putting them in wet washcloths. And you start your, I'll, I'll just do one now and get it started. And remember, once you learn how to do quill work, you'll never forget. You'll probably put it away for a year or two or months and then you'll never forget. It's always gonna come back to you. As soon as you feel your quills are about ready, then just go ahead and flatten them, flatten out your quills so they're flat and easy to wrap with.
Okay, I think we could, we can all um, get started. So at, at least you have one wrap, one quill on your, on your rawhide. Go ahead and flatten one. Go ahead and flatten one, and that will start your uh, quill work. Flatten one and one, and I'll come here, and then I'll go here, and I'll go there, so you know how to do your uh, first wrapping. You always the black point always goes to your left. That's the way I learn easier way of learning, and then you put put it down, and this one over. See how you're doing it? You push the black one and this one over this way. So you have it like this. I'll see, but your black point will be to your left. You're going to fold it over and then put this one, uh, fold it and put the long one above it. Put the long one above your black point. And then you're going to really work with your thumbs. And then you push the black tip up and you're holding it with your left thumb. Your black tip, you hold it with your left thumb. Thumb, and then that gives your right to do your wrapping, and you wrap over the black, black part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you're gonna connect. You're gonna get another, another quill. If your quills are long, you can do two, three wrappings, maybe more, but. Most of the time, three. And if your quilts are shorter, you, you'll have maybe one wrap. But in our class, we'll do, we'll make uh, little bags, and you know how you uh, sew it down your quilts, and you make your own designs on it. You can, we'll do all of that for our next, uh, in our class. When you're connecting, you put the uh, black tip down and you put your uh, quill over, put your black tip down and then you push it up, the black tip up and you're holding that. Now you're going to have two, two quills to hang on to. You hang on to those two. And then you're wrapping again. Okay, so that's your second wheel. So I'll, I'll wrap two white and then I'll take a blue one. I'll take a blue one and then and then I'm gonna connect it here so I put it under under that. Put it under this one. Pull it out and then you push the tip, black tip up. And now you're catching the other quill. Push that up and then you're gonna wrap again. So that starts your quill work. So that's how it's gonna start looking. And when you're beginning to do your quill work, don't worry about the straightness. Oh, mine didn't look straight. Mine has spaces. That's the way you learn. You just keep going.
Because when you're finished with the project, then you're gonna know, you're the one that's gonna know where your mistakes are. And then you, as you work, then you um, know how to space your quills and how to connect. So it's just like when I'm doing my beadwork, I never help anybody take their beadwork apart. I said, just keep going, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end, you can you uh, have a finished project. <laughs> So th that's what quill work is about, just connecting, putting your quills on. And spacing your work. And then at the end, I'll teach you how to and your work. Oh, you're going to yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. And then you're going to connect. Okay, so over here, did you guys start it? Oh, you flatten your films. Flatten your films. And then you can go back the other way. See? Uh -huh. <coughs> so you're not going. See, you're always going the other way. Okay, so now you're ready to come in and put different color on it.
Did you come for the workshop? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 
But you have that uh, loop in there, that thread.